Hey what's up everyone, Tommy here for Hard Rock Life Blog and yeah, we're in Glastonbury. It's mine and Helen's three year anniversary and we came here last year and it's kind of like a little thing we do, we love Glastonbury, it's a pretty cool place to mill around. It's got some amazing history, legend has it that uh, King Arthur lived here, did a load of sh I wish I'd paid more attention to the guide we went on because I literally have no more information in my brain that is the truth other than that. So. Helen has just come out of a shop, a clove shop, one of the many we've been into today and now we are perambulating up the street, oh she's dipping into another clove shop, Haruka, that's basically what we've done today, walk up and down going into some mainly hippie shops, looking at stuff, precious stones and sparrows feet, cauldrons, toad's eyes. But nice, no, it's, it's, you know what, it's, it's, it's a good day out Glastonbury, I do like it. Our mate bought some CBD paste, some legit CBD paste that I'm going to try out, hopefully uh, calm it down a little bit. We, uh, what else did I buy? Someone was burning some wood in a shop that smelled nice, it's like South American woo woo wood and it smelled pretty good. I like a musty woody smell so I bought some of that. Helen got me some Merlin aftershave, <laughs> literally called Merlin, I smell like Merlin, my beard smells pretty magic, which is decent. Alright everyone, so we've just arrived at the Chalice Well and Gardens, which is a famous healing spring, not like a metal spring, a water spring, um, where people have come to imbibe the waters and it's supposed to cure diseases it's a place of contemplation so I've got to be quiet which is really difficult obviously I'm gonna turn off now turn the cameras off we're gonna go into the into the calming electro ley line ridden water of the chalice well mobile free zone okay <laughs> Yeah, so that was the chalice well, pretty chilled out. Babbling brook running through the middle. It's pretty, uh, what would you say, Helen? Ch chalice well. Yep, lovely, there you go. Calming, zen, serenity. All the things that I get 0.0% .0 of every year. Right, so as you probably see, just seeing we are uh, now about breath climbing up here. Sweet Jesus, out of shape, unbelievable. I was powering in front of Helen, you know, make a point obviously, and now I feel like I'm getting out of double hernia. It's windy as balls. I'm 
puffed out and I've not even got to the Glastonbury tour yet. Let's hope those healing energies are uh, all right because I think me and Hells are going to need, uh, we're going to need a few ley lines right up the old Harris to get ourselves back in shape. It is so windy. Oh my days. I walked through the little tunnely bit in the little chapel here and my backpack nearly flew off the bath. Absolutely crazy. It is so windy. I just saw a lurcher looking really windswept and pissed off. He was puffed out. I tell you what, you know it's a climb when you see a tired dog. I mean, when do you ever see a tired dog? Never. That dog was puffed out. Still. We're doing all right. We uh, came and achieved what we set out to achieve. Get up to the top of the tour, have a little look round, and promptly walk back down again. Lovely. The views up here, mate. They are de he heesent. You can see for miles around. 360 panoramic. God, I don't even know if you can hear me. It's probably all ruffled to f from all the wind. Sweet Jesus. Do you know what? I'm done it. Over and out. So right now we're in what's called the Avalon Orchard. It's a little, a little sort of glade filled with apple trees below the tour. There's a few peeps doing some wild camping in here, having a good old time. I don't know where they're going for a poo though. No public toilets. And uh, this is where the first Glastonbury was ever picked. Before it, the town was called Glaston. And um, King Arthur camped here and he saw this golden berry amongst the apples and he picked it, it as the first Glastonbury so hence the town forth from then on was called Glastonbury. He ate them all and they don't grow here anymore. Just apples. Just apples. Well, she's got one job, hold the camera. Before I can even give it to her, she's snacking on bloody milk chocolate Vigo. Unbelievable, one job. Just seen an amazing Irish wolfhound. Love those dogs so much. Like proper would love an Irish wolfhound as a dog. I think they're. I love lurchers. Grew up with a Bedlington cross whippet. I don't know if any of you guys know what one of them is, but I think one day I might just come back to our gaff with a 
Irish Wolfhound, I think they're well nice. Apparently though, they get bad legs because they've been bred really big and they're quite skinny frames and uh, they get like weak old knees and it picks them up. So I don't know if that's, if that's a good idea or not. You know, buying into breeds of dogs that aren't supposed to be as big or as small as they are and they have really shit lives, but hey ho. It's windy as balls.